Okay, for my video project, I decided to do around the topic of angular kinematics. The textbook definition of angular kinematics is the study of rotational motion in the absence of forces. When I personally try to think of my own definition to help me remember it, um, I try to think more of the idea of like angles and how having certain angles can help assist in the motion itself and how when you have different angles that can help in different ways to help make it faster or make it a smoother or slower motion. And that's just kind of how I try to think of it, that like the angles help assist. Um, and then there's three main components of angular kinematics. That's angular position, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Angular position is an object's position compared to a relative reference point. And the two components of position are distance and angular displacement. Distance is the total distance traveled during the motion, and angular displacement is the change in angular position. Angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement, and angular acceleration is the rate of change in the velocity. I think these three components are like kind of are kind of cool because I like how they all like kind of play off of each other. So like depending on how the position turns out, that's going to determine how the velocity turns out, and then that'll determine how the acceleration turns out. And I just think that's kind of cool. Um, and then angular motion is a major concept of angular kinematics, and that is the idea that all points move through the same angle at the same time. And this kind of means that depending on how close or far away the object or body part is from the axis of rotation of the body, that's going to determine how, how the motion will turn out. So for example, if the object is closer to the axis of rotation, it'll go through a smaller angular displacement, but if the object or body part is farther away, it'll have a larger angular displacement. When we look at human motion, we know that human motion, based on this previous information, is a general motion because it has both linear and angular movements in it, for like such as running. When we run, the angle, like how our ankle pushes, our like foot pushes off the ground, and how the, our knee has to be angled to do that motion, but we're all moving in a linear, in a linear line. And when we do our everyday like movements or we play or when we're move, doing movement in playing sports we go through what is called a line of translation which is when we start from one point which would be point a and then we go all the way through the motion to the end point which would be point b so for example i drew out the idea of a cartwheel so when we look at a cartwheel point a would be when you're about to put your hands on the ground you're about to flip over that would be that's what point a would be and then the middle point would be in the air like in the air and then the end point point b would be when your feet touch the ground again at the end of the cartwheel um there are two angles in angular kinematics and that's a relative angle and absolute angle relative angles are angles that are formed between two adjacent segments and they are mainly known as joint angles because these angles are mainly found within the joints of the body and absolute angles are also called segmental angles, and they mainly identify the reference line uh, on the body during the movement. And I also drew out two stick figures, and they are trying to kick a soccer ball. But um, this one shows the relative angles on the body, and these show the absolute angles. So if you can see here, it's like between the knee, see the two angles are between the knees, there's one on the elbow, on the hip of the body bending over. And then the absolute angles are more on the outside of the joint, kind of on like the, on like a plane, kind of. So mainly, absolute angles are on the outside, and relative angles are in the inside of joints, basically. And there's one rule within angular kinematics, and that's the right hand rule. And this is the idea that the direction of the angular motion is determined by how we curl our fingers, and then that can help determine the direction of rotation for our body. And a main component of that is like the thumbs. How your thumb is placed during a motion will help determine how your rotation will work. So if it's if thumb is upwards, that's a positive rotation. But if it's downwards, that'll be more of a negative rotation. And then it'll like alter like as depending on where you have your thumb. And um, a positive motion or positive rotation for the human motion is a counterclockwise motion. So to demonstrate how like angular kinematics works and like more of the right hand rule in like a real world scenario or, like sport, I decided to look at an ice skater skating. So imagine an ice skater starts to skate, um, they start to accelerate their motion, but the line of translation won't start until they go to do the jump and spin in the air. So the line of translation starts at point A, which is when they're about to do the jump on the ice, 
And then the right hand rule comes into play when they're up in the air spinning. So most ice skaters have their arms like this when they go to do a spin because again with the axis of rotation their body, their limbs are closer to their axis of rotation which will give them a smaller displacement so they'll be able to spin faster and their thumbs will be upwards. So they'll spin counterclockwise and have more of a positive motion. But then once they are done with their spin, they go to drop to the ground. Once their skate touches the ice again, that'll be the end of the line of translation. That'll be point B. And then they'll just continue to skate. And that's it. Thanks for watching.